Things like subby, sparky, you are hungry. So bring a solid lunch, bring a massive water bottle with you. G'day legends, welcome back to Think List. And today I'm gonna to be sharing my seven tips on what I think you should know before starting your electrical apprenticeship. Now, of course, this could apply to any other apprenticeship as well. There are specifics around electrical, but if you're doing like your plumbing, carpentry or anything like that, I think you still will get some value. Now, the catalyst for this video was actually somebody commenting on one of my React videos. And it was Cloudy here and he says, I'm planning on doing my electrician trade through the army here across the ditch in NZ. What advice could you give? Well, Cloudy, mate, I am so pumped for you because I think being a tradesman is massively underrated. And I think there is still a bit of a stigma around people that go into trades instead of going to university. I mean, the knowledge economy has got so many people wanting to sit on their butts instead of doing things. All they want to do is, you know, do an events course, or they want to do, you know, gaming, or they want to do YouTube. So I'm going to try and distill all of my information and wisdom I've learned over the 15 years that I've been doing this into one video. It's going to be short. But before I do that, if you haven't watched my channel, I am actually an electrician. I react to things like Electro Boom and some other crazy dudes on the internet. But I have been doing this for a long time, like I said, 15 years. I started out my apprenticeship actually as a domestic electrician. Just with a one-man band, I learned a lot from that guy. And then I moved on to doing like domestic commercial, big high-rise buildings, other shop fit-outs and things like that. And then I moved on to fast-paced manufacturing, industrial. I did like shipping containers, plastics molding, food preparation all sorts of stuff. And now I currently work at one of the biggest water boards within Victoria doing large infrastructure, big pumps and motors and things like that. So I've got a broad knowledge on the electrical trade, but we all have to start somewhere. So I'm taking you right back to the seven things that I wish I knew before starting my apprenticeship. Let's do it. So tip number one guys is that on time is late. And I learned this one from my dad. Now, my dad's like an old school carpenter. I'm pretty sure he was building boats with like Noah or something. <laughs> but he told me that 20 minutes early is actually on time. Now, an example of this would be my first tradesman that I worked with as an apprentice. He was just a one man band and he was going around to people's houses. He was doing rewires, random jobs. And then his start time on site or at their house would be 7.30. So that meant that I had to get to his house at around 6.30 if it was an hour's drive. But actually, I needed to be 20 minutes before that because he would get me to load things up in the car. You know, he would, he would get me to do some paperwork, look at where we're going, back when we had mailways and not GPS. So it's really important to note that you don't want to be holding up your tradesman from doing any work. I mean, we get a notoriously bad name for time already, and that is because it's so, so hard to predict a lot of time in advance, like how long a job is going to take. So don't make it hard for the tradesman. Get there 20 minutes beforehand. All right, guys, this is tip number two, and it is to bring a solid lunch. Now, I know this might sound a little bit stupid to some of you. Um, it depends on really where you work, but this goes back to not being able to inhibit your tradesman from doing what he needs to do throughout the day. You may be just with a one-man band, so you'll be next to him in the car a lot of the time. You don't want him to be taking off some sort of random course to get you lunch, or you don't want to be having to eat takeaway every day because you forgot your lunch or whatever. So just make sure you're bringing a lunch and you're going to be doing a lot of physical work a lot of the time. This may be a little bit different for you if you're coming from straight out of high school. I remember thinking, man, this is a lot of work, up and down ladders all day. You are hungry. So bring a solid lunch, bring a massive water bottle with you because you're going to need it. All right, this is tip number three, and it is to ask questions. Now, I know this seems pretty obvious, but I just want you to picture this, right? You're like 16, 17, 18, and then you're asking questions of this like really busy tradesman. He could be massive. He could be intimidating. You know, you're asking him to stop what he's doing, to give you time to ask you what you think might be some sort of trivial question. But the fact is, if you don't know what you're doing, you could be a danger to yourself and everyone else around you. So 
don't be embarrassed. Take some time, ask the question. And if your tradesman's not willing to give you the time, it might actually be time for you to think, well, maybe I might need to move on to someone who's actually gonna teach me because this is the time where you need to be learning. So this is tip number four, and that is understanding tradie talk. So things like subby, sparky, um, so these are words that you will either get called or you will likely use throughout your apprenticeship. Now, it's just important to note that this is a culture thing. So tradesmen just tend to use swear words a lot more on site. And of course, you don't have to do it. But if you're being called some of these things, you just need to understand that sometimes it's actually an endearing way and they're not really kind of abusing you or bullying you. But of course, you should know the difference between bullying uh, and not. So if you are getting bullied, I would appro I would make sure you approach your tradesman. And of course, um, if you're having problems with your tradesman, your uh, apprenticeship scheme, if you've got one, even go to your trade school or your parents or things like that. So just note that there will be all sorts of different vernacular coming out of tradesman's mouth and it's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, this is tip number five and this is specifically for Sparkies and that is to get your Bible. And no, I don't mean like the Bible, I mean AS3000. It's called the Bible because essentially you'll be holding it close to your heart for four years. You'll need to read this thing back to front. Being an electrician is half about doing the job and another half about understanding the theory and legislation. AS3000 within Australia and New Zealand actually is a legislated standard. It's one of the only ones that can be called up within court. And if you're not following it, you can get into some really deep trouble. So this is something that you will be taught throughout your trade. But before you get started, it's you should go and buy it, purchase a hard copy I recommend, and just read and understand like the chapters. Where are things like earthing? Where are things like underground cable protection and things like things that you might be working on. So just familiarize yourself with AS3000. So this is tip number six, and that is to get good tools. So when I started my apprenticeship, I got like this uh, apprentice trade kit from Wattmaster. It had apparently everything that I needed. Uh, I don't have one tool from that kit because it was crap. I mean, it was good value. But honestly, if you can afford it, I would highly recommend getting some decent tools. All right, this is tip number seven, and that is that safety is above all else. Now, this is something that I've only recently really thought of in the latter part of my whole trade. And it's only until you get to like, you know, your big industrial um, infrastructure companies that they have some really, really heavy OHS policies. And it's really, really important that you can try and adopt these if you're not in these industries, if you're in domestic, try and understand that you should really be thinking about your safety first and foremost. What you're doing is not worth losing your life over and not being able to see your family at the end of the day. So just make sure that if you think that something is not safe, you report it to your tradesman or you report it to somebody else to make sure that you're not conducting unsafe work. All right, that is pretty much it for me. I have got a ton of different information that I could help you guys with if you want. So just leave comments below. If you enjoyed this video, could you please subscribe and also like because it really, really helps me out. But otherwise, if you're thinking about getting an apprenticeship, I highly recommend doing it. It can open so many doors. You will get some of the most amazing experiences out there. You get to do and learn at the same time. So get out there and do it.